Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. And she is now in her proper spot behind me. A little more familiar. Yeah, you don't have her in the hot seat Somewhat today. controlled. Right? right, just kidding. But we are going to be just going through, this is a color and cut appointment. So many of you wanted to see how she did my last cut. And honestly, we were just talking about this. That was like a spur of the moment decision to do what we did last time. So we are gonna do that one more time for you all so we can film it. But also I know I keep getting a lot of questions about kind of my color and all of that. So Kristen is yes. going to graciously go through kind of all those just little details. We're not gonna make this like super long video, but- Kind of the facts. Yeah. <laughs> of the facts of Shirley's natural color. Right. <laughs> yeah, so she's gonna tell you how she achieves the colors that she does, what she uses, the products she uses, all of that. And then obviously go through the cut and everything. Now, if you have not seen any of the previous salon visit videos, I do have a playlist. I'll link that in the description box below, oh, along good. with the products that she uses and all of that. But Perfect. if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Now let's get started. And she's going to explain yes, just well, a little bit about what we're looking at. For here. most people, I think a big thing is they always like love her, like the whiteness in, in with the cool brown. And so, a lot the big way that we achieve that ultimately is just that she is only highlights like throughout so i know that's tricky because a lot of people like to do you know the, they need the gray coverage and so you have to do a you know a base color to achieve and then add the highlights so there last appointment we ended up taking her much shorter this is all of her natural color so i would say shirley is definitely like five, six-ish natural color. And she is more on a cool side, so more of like an ash natural color. So she too, believe it or not, has a little bit of natural, we'll call it mature blonde. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so when we actually took it shorter, in, in my opinion, it kind of exposed a little bit more of it than, than normally. Cause usually I don't, honestly, I kind of just roll with it and don't notice it too terribly much. Mm -hmm. So what she kind of had some good little tips is that she actually used her, um, what was it, a mascara? A tinted brow gel. A, a tinted brow gel for your eyebrows. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of married it, like kind of did brush it on like here. And I thought that was a great idea because that's obviously right in the front and that's where everybody, <laughs> everybody we don't love those that. things. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a way to deal with it. Mm -hmm. um, so she's, like I said, like a, between a five and a, I would say five, you're probably yeah. a five. Ashier brown color. And then I use for her highlighting, a, um, I use Wella Blondor. I do use a like pretty heavy volume on her and that's how we achieve that white blonde. And she sits very happily under that dryer, sometimes for 30 minutes. So, it, but not everybody's hair can handle that. And I know that like, I don't do that on everyone. So I know hers can't. So that's what we use. Again, uh, Wella Blondor uh, Lightener with 40 volume. So no Olaplex, no uh, bond builders, nothing. I, she's able to handle it on her own and we just we just babysit it. And plus we're not doing major like, whoa, today we're we're gonna go brown, tomorrow we're going blonde. We're pretty, we, we alter what we do and how the highlighting and you know, sometimes we do less, sometimes we do more. So I'm not like counteracting what I'm doing, so. All right, number two. Number two, Let's start. We are, so I will do, um, I go, cause I think, I think people probably wonder, and honestly, you guys, I've kind of learned this myself, like slowly, but surely, um, what I am a little more comfortable with. And honestly, cause I, I didn't really seek out too much. I really went off of like doing hers and, and a, anybody else who she sends me through the past years, you know, yeah. uh, when they want to go that short. Um, I do take it like all the way up here. Um, with the razor, not, and I don't really round it out mm -hmm. because, and I think those might be questions for a hairdresser that they might wonder. Mm -hmm. Reason being, if I round it out, I'm gonna leave a little length, which it might give the bottom, like the longer hair, a little volume. Yes. Um, then we have problem with a little popping out. Mm -hmm. If they want that, that's great. But obviously then it becomes a bit like a mushroom head and that's <laughs> usually the problem we don't like at the, yes. end, of four, at the end of four weeks but right? definitely makes <laughs> a difference that's right especially depending on their head shape um if someone is a little bit like more of a square shape mm -hmm. those types of things are definitely a thing to consider so i go ahead and i do the two all the way around um first
so in the back here, I'm going to leave her just a little bit. Um, it, it does this, her back doesn't give her that many problems. It's, mm -hmm. it's more of her sides. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going to leave a little bit of this length, um, and not go clear to the top reason being for next time. If she's like, ah, let's leave the sides, not as short, let's not go as long, um, in this crown area. She won't have to deal with this popping up. Cause if we go so short, obviously in the crown, it's kind of like a bad, it could create like a little extra popping in like, <laughs> like a bad cow like oh, situation. Yeah, <laughs> no, and a lot of people too, when you start going shorter, one thing I, <laughs> I would say I've, I've gotten used to, but initially would kind of shock me. And I think that Shirley kind of felt this way <laughs> when you go to a two versus like a four or a five or whatever yes. longer, yes. all of a sudden you do kind of start to see your scalp. Mm-hmm. It's true. And that can be a little scary, you know? So I, I, I mean, I don't know. If that's something to consider if you feel a little maybe naked. <laughs> yes. I think it's kind of a thing. It is. Cause it that, cause is. your scalp is just, is, yeah. is a little bit, is, is like lighter at that point. Cause it yes. hasn't seen the sun. So oh, yeah. last time I definitely had some tan lines. <laughs> I, I don't tan. <laughs> so, oh, yes. She was actually having for hairdressers. Uh, she was having a little popping out issue with this side. It was just getting a little funky. So what I kind of am going to do is I am going to actually not go as clean to this right spot there. because she had a little bit like where the hair was just popping up a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to just kind of leave that a little longer because it, and when it's a little longer, it's just blend it basically. Okay. That's one thing I've, I've kind of learned over doing these is like, you just have to pick your area in which you... Like it's okay to not be totally uniform every day, right. you know, I've had and to kind of learn to that. And you have to do it according to where somebody's cowlicks are or... Right, customize all that yeah. stuff. So this is going to be the number one number here. Number uno. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see there, see how much cleaner, mm -hmm. but again, you can also see that color change, like where she doesn't look like that, like, you know, right. it's, it's more like, how... like darker. Yeah. Because the darker, obviously there's just more of it when it's, it's a bit more longer. Hair. Yes. So... Some people might like it just short right through here. And then, so you can kind of oh, blend, true. blend right through there and then not do everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, going shorter like this does really help also for, uh, not only the look, which is, you know, we kind of go for both, but for mm -hmm. someone who actually likes it for more of the functionality, mm -hmm. it does really help for people who really are sensitive with like, they get long around the ear. Right. Yes. If you take that extra little, a little bit more here. I mean, if you want lightning bolts, you can do oh, that. Right? With yes. With your sideburn. We're going to go with a little bit more of like a point. I oftentimes just use my comb as my guide here. And, um, and again, I kind of do keep it a little extra clean around. So just real slow. Because it could get messy quick. <laughs> my son's haircuts, you know, they all of a sudden are distracted. White wall. All, yes. They've been a little extra white walls sometimes when when there's they a bit of a move. Head, oh, yeah. yes. I know. I'm, I'm filming and I'm like, I'm not looking. Yeah, don't anything. look. <laughs> and then around her hairline, um, we've kind of been venturing out a little more and doing kind of a fun, even though she is as short as she is, um, we've actually been kind of taking that corner and kind of getting rid of that corner and making it slightly like bead, mm -hmm. not totally clean and like, mm -hmm. but making it to where she actually gets, most people have some kind of hair that grows back, but it kind of helps with that, but also allows her to kind of have a little different shape. I think it's kind of fun with this haircut too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Add a little edge to it. So with her, I am going to start in the crowns because by the time I take up, um, you know, in a good way over time, I used to put like coil her whole head, but now that we yeah. take off half of it at the bottom, <laughs> the hair is gone. Yes. It it works. <laughs> so I just take, um, a big thing for myself is taking super little baby lights on the first couple of coils on the bottom, like probably first three, four, uh, why I, for me preferentially, I like the way that it lays so soft over, um, the shortened hair. 
Um, and that way, I don't love seeing like the chunky lines. So here again, real fine baby lights. You could even go finer if you're a finer baby lighter. <laughs> that works too, it's just to blend nicely. And again, like the first three or four. And yes, this is Blondor with 40 even the back. She's super dark, so, and very, um, she's got real strong hair, so, which is a good thing. Very stubborn hair. Right? Yes. We want to say. Yes, but you know, I've also, you know, I've got a couple people who I, you know, do a similar style, but, uh, you know, in color, we kind of as well variate just to their own liking and preference, but, you know, it's for them, they, they might, you know, I only need 20. So again, obviously you want to use really what's best for your client. So when I do these little shorties in the back, I oftentimes make sure that all this down here is just kind of straight and it doesn't, because some of these short ones will pop back up and yes, you can end up with that bleeding, which is not what she wants. And depending on the curvature of someone's head too, like she has a nice round, you know, head all the way around, but like I can feel like right here in these corners, sometimes if you, if I do too wide of a section on her, I can tell that what happens is they, this is me just dissecting this. They can get a little vulnerable for uh, bleeding because they might pop out of the foil and not hold this tight. So then I just kind of take those out. But, and I tend to mix my lightener a little bit, like a little thicker anyway. So the whole Greek yogurt concept is kind of true. I know they talk about that in balayage, but I, for myself, I kind of like it even, not maybe, yeah, no, Greek yogurt is kind of like it, like it. <laughs> Consistency. recently found some really good little at home toning I things. Have. What yes. are what are you using again? Because I, I, I actually was going to share share the wealth in that yes. regard. Um, it is the L'Oreal Le Gloss Toning Treatment. You do it in your shower. It is a conditioner. It's almost like putting on a hair mask. So you just shampoo, put it on. And depending on whether you have natural or color treated hair, depends on how long you leave it on. I leave it on for between five and 10 minutes and it's amazing. Gives great shine, great toning, and it lasts for almost a week on me. I wash my hair about six times a week. So so does it feel, it's like you said, it's a bit more like a mask because yes. some of my, you know, there's some really good like purple tone shampoos out there, yes. but I find that like some of those really dry your yes. hair out. This is the exact opposite. Oh, that's awesome. And I think around the hairline, I like to do them uh, I do like the foils more towards the hairline. Uh, it's a little, to me, I just like the way it comes out better. I don't like lines and that prevents that, so. Yeah, I mean, you can see how amazing, and I get my color done every three months. Yeah, so it's not so frequent. It is not frequent, but I don't have that harsh grow out line with this method. So here, so you guys can kind of notice, I start to kind of thicken this a little bit. So I've kind of come to the top where these will kind of pop up a little bit more. So we're we're at a point where I like to now start to give a little that little pops of contrast going on there. So if that makes kind of sense. We've done our blending on the bottom mm -hmm. and now in the crown, I like them a little chunkier. Yeah. And again, just kind of painting those little ends that may need it. So as you can see her color, this here mm -hmm. is her natural. It helps her. Yes. She looks like she doesn't really need a retouch no. in the front. And honestly, that is why I have kept a lot of the blondes and not wanted to go dark because that's a really hard thing to cover. Well, and you would notice it. I've had a few yeah. people who have done just like normal coverage there and yeah. gray coverage like with a solid tint. And I'll tell you, that is the first thing they notice every yeah. time, obviously, because it's around their hairline. Mm -hmm. And again, around this face, I do the same thing as I did around the perimeter. Really fine little spots, uh, really fine highlighting. First, probably like first two, and then I'll start to kind of change it up depending on what I want. Why, why I like this around the hairline is just so that way it's, you know, it's kind of seamless. When they pull it back, yeah, it's, they'd have regrowth, but 
it's not like, whoa, they're solid blonde going back, you know? Right. Here is where these bangs start to overlay. So as you can see, we've already kind of got a chunky. Sometimes I'll continue the chunky. I probably will right now. Sometimes I'll throw a slice. So your discretion, but just to kind of show you, but that's partially because I know that that lays due to the length that we got going on there. And the slice versus chunky, I mean, they're similar. Chunky just gives a little bit, um, you could do all slices if you wanted. It would be really blonde. It just gives a little of that variation. You ready to go? No, I just like I've got like a foil hat on. Yeah. Like a no, white brim. It looks it does. It's kind of cute. So I will um probably go ahead and put her under the dryer because she does stay forever. And I know that's not every client, but she does take a bit. Here so, she yeah. is. So as you can see, uh we have toned her. I, you know, we didn't take that little part, but yeah. I toned her with Redkin shades 9B only. We talked about, did you want to be more of like a white or like an ash? So she said more of a white. Um, so I kind of went for just like a real neutral white palette. So we're going to go ahead and trim her. I'm going to start here in the back. So as you can see, this is like how long her length is. She's probably, like I said, got a good like three inches. This is actually long. I feel like last time we didn't trim that much on her. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you are feeling long, right? Okay. So I go with a very um, textury little, I, I love to use my little carving comb. Donald Scott, that's what brand it is. <laughs> Used to be a Paul Mitchell carving comb. I'm not sure where they branched off from there, but that's what happened. Mm -hmm. uh, with it, I love it. It's a razor. It also has little, this is the normal razor. This is also like the chipping out side. I like the chipping out. I like being able to just flip back and forth. It's very convenient. So I'm probably taking off, um, as you can see now, when I pull this out, it's not, it's not near as long. I took off probably about, honestly, probably like an inch on that because it was good. Mm -hmm. So a normal trim to me is a half inch on an half on a four week haircut. So I did go a little more since she was feeling that extra long. And as well, I just pull kind of that whole crown down and uh, kind of marry that to make sure it's all good around there. And uh, you can see like here, this is where she's naturally kind of popping up, right? We, we've just trimmed that. I didn't even do any layering. These are the things you want to consider when you are giving this type of haircut, like any short haircut for that matter, right? You want to see, especially when they're wet, like she's got a pretty good amount of volume already there. So if I go too short on all of this or trim too much, she's going to be fighting it the whole time. So I like to kind of really take into what, what's going on when you're wet. So that's just a good little haircut. So like on the length here, so here, um, she, because I haven't layered she still is currently like one, two, three, two and a half, three. And I probably won't trim her too much from that. We tend to leave her kind of like the same length in the crown area here. And then we kind of do slight variations, which I'll kind of talk about through through here. So I kind of take what I call the headband area. I will take where we kind of have trimmed and I'll probably just trim probably about a half inch, three fourths of an inch. She did again, say she felt long, so. Um, I won't do too as much in this calic area due to the fact that it already is feeling a little overly ambitious to pop up. <laughs> okay, and then so once I trim out that little bit, that's when I kind of go through here and kind of deeper point cut. And as you can see, it's kind of just starts to naturally. Yes, we want a little bit of volume, but not to where a problem. So, so then here, right on this. Remind me, you said you were kind of okay. Here. Yeah. So nice. just a trim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right here on the top, really on the headband. So I, when I say that, I mean ear to ear. We kind of do take her a little shorter right through there. It's kind of for her to play with that area. She can 
blend it, not to say to the back, but kind of start to piece it in to the front because there is a kind of a little disconnect from here's a little lengthier, this is a little longer, but she also wants to have a little bit of volume as well. So that's a good little spot for that. And how long would you say that? that Our little spot? Uh -huh. This one's here probably like, like a little, and it really is just this tiny little section. Um, I would say that's probably about two inches. a bit here i gave her a little bit of her guideline it's very minimal like slight variation of like i trimmed a half, half inch off um the other side we kind of take this this side a little shorter kind of above that ear but over here it, it lays different because it this is where she parks over so one thing about it is that like as you can see see these little ends they're kind of flipping so that's just called lightener <laughs> but with that we i kind of don't do as much texturizing on those because they will uh, naturally get their own texture by the wear and just her styling and all that. So I just tend to kind of leave her a little more straight, right? Like, uh, meaning I don't texturize as much right here in the front where we've done so much um, coloring, if that makes any sense. Even on her bangs, we kind of just more blunt cut, maybe a little texturizing, but that's about it. This is where we cut that little headband part. Again, like that little spot was like about two inches. As you can see, I've taken a little guideline to the front. So what I then do is pull this all back and I'm not gonna completely marry it together, but I will do like that half inch trim because she's kind of liking, we're kind of dusting her ends, keeping them clean from that 40 volume processing. We did. She gets all this volume from it, you know? I know, it does. It's like. Root boost. Right. Permanent root boost. <laughs> it happens all by itself. It does. So she gets kind of thick through here. And like she was saying, it's been working out. We are still maintaining length, but, and again, I, I don't want to do too much of the texturizing uh, with the razor. So what I do make sure I kind of pay attention to is that we, we do our little trim that we talked about. And then I really do take, and I take this PC, Take the scissors and kind of just pull some of this chunkiness out here. That really makes a big difference. It just kind of buys you that time and also, but keeps the length. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but also the, the scissors are not a razor, so they keep a little bit of a healthier version. Oh. Yeah, whereas like the razor does, you know, kind of slices the hair. I mean, that's in a great way that if you want that, but then you also have to deal with that in a negative way as well. <laughs> And I do have thick hair and Super thick. pretty coarse hair. Yeah. But I get questions all the time. Will this work on finer, thinner hair? You, I for sure believe it can. Like I, yes, you have to make little changes. Like I feel like you have to do a little chunkier texturizing okay. on someone who has finer hair. What does that mean? Um, that means that like, whereas I do little fine little point cuts, I would actually take like deeper, chunkier pieces because you have to almost create find likes to blend really, really easily. Okay. If you um, kind of create right. a little bit of valleys, you've okay. got to kind of get, add the own texture, like its own texture to it. Yes, yeah, so then I kind of just go through and I just kind of feel where she feels kind of like thick. And you just kind of, again, I kind of cut, like, think of them as like valleys. And then rather than just like little, like little tiny, little tiny point cuts, you're actually taking that section and you're actually cutting into it. She's using Kenra Root Boost. You just kind of put it everywhere. She's short enough that like, you definitely can overdo it, but... I almost feel like this kind of adds a little bit like it's almost kind of like a mousse rather than putting in another right yes. product to weigh down. Yeah. Like
always, thank you so much for coming along. It's been real. Again, a huge thank you, as always, oh, to <laughs> the best hairstylist out there. Oh, you guys are too nice. No. <laughs> I hope I answered questions for you. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Be sure you check the description box for more salon videos. Right. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.